why do we need electron microscopy? Let's go back a bit and remember the wave theory of light. The resolution of an optical microscope is limited, and this limit depends on the wavelength of light and the aperture of objective. But after some simplification, it's approximately half the wavelength. So even if you use a deep ultraviolet light source and a perfect optical system with no aberrations at all, which by the way do not exist, the maximum resolution will be somewhere around 180 nanometers, which is quite acceptable for most laboratory analysis, but extremely insufficient for scientific nanoresearch. And that's the main reason why we need a source with a shorter wavelength. And an electron beam with a wavelength 10,000 times shorter is an excellent solution. This is our tabletop scanning electron microscope. Metal cylinder is the column with magnetic lenses inside. For sure we can't use ordinary optical lenses because we're dealing with the electron beam and the physics of visible waves refraction is not working in this case. Magnetic lenses create a magnetic field that allows you to control the beam shape, astigmatism and focus. The emitter can be tungsten wire, crystal of lanthanum hexabaride or a special sharp crystal of tungsten in field emission guns. In our case, we have tungsten hairpin filament with thermal emission. On the right side, there is an aperture knob with different apertures. We can control beam convergence angle and beam diameter. Small aperture, higher resolution, greater depth of field, but lower signal because you are cutting off the part of an electron beam. Large aperture, high signal, but less depth of field and lower resolution. The mid-range of 50 microns is a great starting point. There are also scanning coils that perform raster scanning by deflecting the beam to each scanning point step by step. So in a fraction of moment we receive information about only one pixel of the image, and while raster scanning we form the whole image. So the upper part of the microscope forms an electron beam of correct shape, diameter, focus and deflects it to the desired point of the sample. Bottom part of the microscope is a sample chamber with motorized 5-axis stage and detectors that determine the flow of electrons and forming a signal. In our case, we have two detectors, secondary electron detector and backscattered electron detector. When the electron beam hits the sample, it interacts with the atoms in that sample. There are a number of outcomes. Some electrons bounce back out of the sample, called backscattered electrons. Others knock into atoms and displace electrons which in turn come out of the sample, called secondary electrons. Alternatively, X-rays and light or heat in the sample can be the result of these interactions. We collect the electrons coming out of the material in order to produce the traditional SAM images. And the analysis of each interaction gives you the necessary data about the sample. So in SEMs with a large chamber, you can install special detectors that will collect the data about the different interactions of the electron beam with the sample, giving you information about the properties, elemental analysis, phase difference and other data of the scanned area. And last but not least, vacuum system. We have two pumps, one is the rotary pump outside and the second is turbomolecular pump near the column. High vacuum mode is a normal mode of operation for the SEM. A high vacuum minimizes scattering of the electron beam before it reaches the specimen. This is important as scattering or attenuation of electron beam will increase the spot size of the beam and reduce resolution, especially in the secondary electron mode. The high vacuum condition also optimizes collection efficiency of the secondary electrons. Of course, we have computer with the software, power supply and spatter quarter for coating the unconductive specimens with a nano layer of platinum or gold. Now it's time to turn it on and go deep in the imaging process. Today we will be working with a special sample resolution standard tin on carbon. It looks like a tin spheres of different diameters. This sample is ideal for setting up and demonstrating the microscope. We can also understand the true resolution of our microscope by measuring the minimum visible gap between the spheres. Before installing the sample on top of the stage, it's necessary to measure it using special caliper. Let's put this data to the software and close the chamber. Now we can initialize vacuum and start the column. Ok, something is visible here and now it's time to make some adjustments. Let's look at the all parameters step by step. Accelerating voltage. In theory, an increase in accelerating voltage will result a higher signal to noise ratio in the final image. But the situation is not so simple. With a high accelerating voltage, the electron beam penetration is greater, therefore spatial resolution will be reduced. 
Secondary electron detector will collect some portion of backscattered electrons and this also reduces the resolution. Also charging and heating of delicate samples increases. I will set it to 30 kV just to get the maximum signal of our resolution test. The sample is a perfect conductor. Experienced users may object to me because they use high dwell time settings for collect the signal on low kVs. The scanning speed decreases and we can collect more signal in every point. But in this tabletop microscope, I have no way to adjust the dwell time without hacking the surface mode. Ok, let's adjust the beam. We need to align the beam to increase the intensity. We can check the histogram for better alignment. Spot size. It's a cross-sectional diameter that the cone of the beam makes on the surface of the sample. It affects the resolution of the image and the number of electrons generated. The lower spot size, the higher the resolution but darker the image. In Alpha software, this slider is inverted, so if I want to increase the spot size, I should shift this slider left. Signal will be higher and image will be brighter. We also should check the gain of the detector and secondary electron collect settings. For this microscope, gain about 70 is the best choice. Now we need to get an image. First, 10K magnification. Let's find the focus. Ok, somewhere here. Now we should adjust aperture and stigmation. First is the aperture. Click the wobble button. The microscope changes focus up and down and we see the sample shift. This indicates that the beam is not perpendicular to the surface of the sample. Let's adjust the aperture to get a perfect image without the XY shift. I use manual aperture knob, but some systems have motorized aperture and special wheels on the control panel. Ok, perfect. Second point, stigmation. We need to correct the astigmatism of the beam using the stigmator. The main idea is to make the image sharp on both axes without blur. We should clearly see round spheres. It's a tricky thing and we need to spend more time for obtaining the results. Ok, now we can finally adjust brightness and contrast and perform a scan. Let's try to squeeze out the maximum possible resolution. 200K magnification, wobbler and stigmation alignment, and that's it. Nice resolution for this type of the system and sample. For this kind of testing, gold on carbon will be the better sample because gold particles are similar in size and the depth of field allows you to create a really nice image. But unfortunately I don't have it, so maybe next time I will try to do it. I'm sure I forgot something. Yes, I forgot about the working distance while recording the video. The working distance is the distance between the bottom of the column and the top of the sample. This is a very important parameter for two reasons. The first is depth of field, the second is resolution. Often we need to get a high quality image of the entire object in focus. And for this purpose we need to increase the working distance. Let me tell you how it works. The conical beam focuses on the object forming a spot. If it crosses the object surface above this point, the spot size will be larger and the sharpness will be worse. When increasing the working distance, we increase the zone along the z-axis in which the spot size will be small enough to produce the in-focus image. Therefore, when increasing the working distance, the depth of field increases. As for the resolution, it decreases, since the electron beam, which travels a long distance, will focus worse due to aberrations and environmental influences. Secondary electron collection and signal-to-noise ratio are also reduced. If you want to get the maximum resolution, be sure to check the manual of your microscope. Every microscope has an optimal working distance for high-res images on high magnifications. I'm sure I forgot something, but I tried to fit all the information into a short video. If you mainly work with a light microscopy, watch this video on my channel. Hope it will be useful. Have a great day wherever you are. See you!